How's it going friends and welcome back to the channel. So in this video we are going to be finishing off the Royfield Models uh, 135th uh, Sherman Easy 8. So in this video we'll be finishing the model, painting it up, weathering it, we'll be doing those uh, shell impact craters and we'll be doing some of the stowage and the tracks as well to finish the whole uh, model off. So stick around to the end of the video to see the finished model. So you know what you need to do now is grab yourself a good brew and a bicky and let's just jump straight into the build. So starting off with a black base coat as, as always and I'm going to do a sort of pre-shade and I'm going to use uh, flat white for this and basically um, highlighting the top areas and leaving any kind of, sort of I'd say panel lines, but it's not really panels but where the, the seams and joins the tank are and I'm going to concentrate on sort of the higher uh, areas and trying to give a kind of graded um, effect because what I want to try and do with this is give it more of a sort of bleached look so of course so the, the light is going to be coming down from the top of the vehicle so i'm going to hit basically all the upper surfaces with more of intense white and uh, some of the raised areas which i believe would probably get more of a bleaching next i'm going to do the same again but i'm going to use a yellow and it's pretty much exactly the same thing but just a relative well sort of relatively uh, light uh, coating uh, again, pay more attention to the upper hull area. From there, I went in with the olive drab and built it up in light layers. <laughs> so at this point, I wasn't overly happy with the overall look. So I went in with, uh, again, some olive drab and some green yellow. Bit of a weird looking colour. <laughs> But actually, when I did this, I kind of redid it, everything like I did before, but kind of like in reverse. And I was a lot happier with the uh, end uh, result. It's not quite as intense as it looks uh, here. Uh, unfortunately, the light, I need to get the light and change in my spray booth. It uh, kind of bleaches stuff out, or probably could just adjust it on the phone. Um, so yeah, so this was more of the kind of look I was kind of going for. Again, that sort of kind of sun-kissed kind of look. Here I went in with pure olive drab and just ran it across all the uh, welds, uh, seams, around the hatches and the engine deck. And this just sort of picks up the, um, the sort of like again the, the weld area and kind of uh, separate the areas uh, a little bit more. And afterwards, just to tidy up a little bit, I went back over the, with that previous uh, olive drab and yellow just to tighten it all up. Now, for the markings, I'm just going for a simple uh, star on the turret, and I'm using this Vallejo uh, mask, taped off around the, the outer circle, because I did one that as a success, and basically put it into the right area that I, I wanted, what I thought I wanted, actually wasn't in the right area initially, and just very lightly and directly over it uh, to try and avoid any sort of uh, overspray. Um, and just gave it a light misting of white. Now when I took the mask off I actually caught the paint and actually I was quite happy with that and left it because that was a little bit of pre-chipping I didn't need to later on. The sort of last thing here we really sort of uh, need to paint up is that uh, shroud around the mantlet and I just went in some really light layers of kind of like a khaki colour uh, and building it up and again building it up to those light areas because again we want to give it that sort of sun bleached look and the last little sort of personal detail I uh, decided to name the tank April no idea why because we're nowhere near April when we're doing this so <laughs> I just thought it was a nice name and just somewhat different to do it's not a bad bit of freehand in there uh, if I do say so myself so moving on to the chipping and using that same uh, olive drab and uh, yellow green, just adding a little bit more yellow green to make it sort of stand out. I obviously chip all the main areas that are most likely going to get knocked about, so like the corners and around the hatches. And then went in with a brush to sort of emphasize some of those chips, add a few more scratches and scrapes 
uh, across the tank. I then go in with my new favourite panel liner, which used to be uh, Tamiya's uh, br uh, sort of brown uh, colour. I'm using AK's uh, wash, uh, dark brown wash for olive uh, green vehicles. And just go around sort of all the kind of caps and around the uh, hatches and particularly around the uh, well beads. Cleaned it up a little bit with uh, some white spirit and pushing it into sort of around the bolt heads and sort of any recesses and again like around the cast uh, numbers. Once I was happy with all that, I gave it a very light uh, coating of uh, gloss and then went in with some artist oils to try and recreate some kind of uh, like rain uh, streaks down the side of the vehicle. I forget the colours, I'm afraid, sorry, uh, that I used for this, but I kind of made up like a kind of like a buff uh, looking colour. I did a few uh, dabs on, as you've seen before, and with the dry brush, streak it down uh, the vehicle. On the top, I just basically stippled it in um, because it kind of doesn't really streak anywhere. So stippling here is the best way to go to give it that sort of like dusty uh, rain markings. Now, I did do all this pretty much the wrong way around. I should have uh, done these sort of dark chipping um, first uh, so I used a sort of like a German grey and I think it was a dark brown uh, for the inner parts of the chips and again I should have done this before to tie it in um, with those uh, rain streaks and admittedly I hadn't really finished where I was because I need to sort of let those dry anyway and added some more um, some of this does get washed away uh, a little bit when I go to do the shell impacts. At this point, I'd also remembered I hadn't done the sort of chipping across the weld beads. So I went in with a uh, steel color, uh, lightly went across uh, those and then went in again with the uh, dark brown wash, uh, just to add in the dirt in between the uh, weld beads. So for the shell impacts, I start off with uh, basically lead pencil. Uh, I scraped it off into a dish and used a very uh, short, rough, old uh, brush and sort of stippled it in to uh, the, the impact craters, um, but very particularly around those jagged edges where the metal obviously sort of superheats and sort of gives you that sort of, uh, you know, very rough uh, edging. I then filled in the centers again the same as the chipping uh, with this sort of uh, dark gray brown um, paint and uh, then went in with uh, a rust I used uh, AK's uh, light rust uh, to start off with and then used uh, MIG's um, streaking rust this is a slightly darker brown and kind of did a, a little bit of a wet blend and because there was quite a lot of paint in there I started to streak it down um, from the impact crater again this is to sort of uh, simulate that these shell impacts have been here for a considerable amount of time they start to rust and obviously it starts to dribble out um, and what I did was I let it uh, dry uh, a little bit and then just sort of built the layers up uh, from there. I also added a few chips again around the uh, shell impacts to sort of again recreate the sort of shrapnel that may have been blown away uh, from the area and obviously would have chipped the surrounding area. And at this point I was actually quite happy uh, with the way this turned out because this is the first time I have uh, done this. Uh, and then just to add a little bit more to it, I went in with a lead pencil again and uh, just brushed it over uh, the top and using a uh, silicon uh, tip paintbrush uh, just to sort of polish all that um, lead uh, to give it a bit more of a shiny sort of look again to sort of tend to show a little bit of wear over it. So obviously when these metal areas um, get rubbed over quite a bit, they tend to sort of uh, stay highly polished. Uh, 
Moving on to the tools, I kind of did the same as I did uh, in the shell uh, impact uh, craters. Started off with sort of like, well, actually with these ones, I actually started off with German grey and then did the same sort of uh, wet blending uh, with the two rust tones. Once I got over uh, all the tools that need to be rusted up, uh, I just quite simply clean the area up with some odorless thinners. For the wood handles, I started off with a uh, wood base from uh, AK and then very lightly went over with wood grain. I went on with a kind of relatively wet coat and then with a, again, a dry brush, preferably a pretty old tatty one, and very lightly dragged uh, that paint down uh, as ununiform as possible and managing for probably the upteenth time of trying this a relatively decent uh, looking wood grain i did the same for all the tools um, but just used a few varying different colors just to add a little bit of variation in them for the fuel uh, sort of staining around the filler caps and the drain off i use abtalung uh, grease for this it's a really nice uh, Sort of like acrylic oil paint uh, this is actually the first time i'm using this uh, properly and it works the same as in a fashion the same way as um, sort of normal artist oils do so you can put a basically a load down and then i actually use odorless thinners for this uh, just sort of blend it about um, and you know once it's dry if you want to just keep adding layers obviously using uh, thin layers to build up to sort of like the kind of level of grime or in the, obviously in this case uh, fuel that you want to appear on your model i also do the same around the uh, gun turret ring as more of a just in case it's not really going to be seen uh, in the end but i thought it was worth doing just to add a little bit more to the model Once I was happy with all that, I moved on to putting the road wheels onto the tank, ready to move on to the next step of weathering. So for the weathering lower hull, I'm using AK's uh, Diorama series. These are acrylic paints, first time I've used them. They're not too bad, uh, to be fair, I was quite happy with them. I built up with a couple of different colors, just to sort of, uh, you know, kind of like emulate a bit of dry mud and a bit of wet mud in there as well. There is a little bit of texture uh, into these. They're all right um, for that. I think they're probably going to be better for more groundwork than they are uh, potentially on the vehicle. Now on to the tracks. As you can see, I've primed them in a sort of blacky uh, brown colour. I think I actually used uh, German grey for this. I then used um, AK's uh, light rust wash. Again, just pretty much slapped it all over the tracks. They dry a little bit and then added a little bit of speckling there as well. Also did the same uh, with the uh, dark rust. And then um, across any of the sort of areas that are going to get caught, so like the cleats themselves and the guide horns, I painted them uh, silver just to you know get, again show that impression that they've been used and worn quite a lot now for the dirt i went back to using uh, ak's again diorama series and using uh, their splatter effects which was uh, stripped earth thinned it quite heavily with uh, water slapped it all over the tracks let it dry and then with um, a damp brush quite heavily but to be fair it's quite full of water and just run it up and down uh, the center parts uh, of the rubber pads to again just show the fact that the tank is moving and these sort of areas are you know not actually gathering up mud because obviously they wouldn't because it's in continuous use and again using the cotton bud just to sort of wipe away any access excess sorry not access um and from here on out we just move on to uh, the accessories uh, I've used I think I mentioned this in the last bit video uh, a combination of uh, mini art uh, items so like these um, well this wine bottle crate which is gonna have some wine bottles put into it uh, some uh, red dog uh, resin crates and uh, some the rest of the stuff 
is actually within the kit so it's a couple of jerry cans and the ammunition boxes as you've seen with that so i just did a pretty much mostly dry brushing uh, and using some enamel washes uh, into the crevices uh, of the wood grain because it's already there and uh, a little bit of a dry brush over the top and you can see the wine bottles there I did a bit of paint on the top to give them that kind of waxy uh, top and it came with some decals for labels and I did eventually uh, well I dry fitted them and then when I was happy with the position of them and, and the orientation of it all I glued them all into place just using some Tamiya extra thin For stuff like the oil cans, again, I used the same as I did for the fuel uh, spills using Abtai Lung uh, 502 uh, engine grease. I actually find this is quite a uh, versatile uh, paint. This is an acrylic oil, and I just found it really good for all those uh, oil stains, really, basically. And this is the, you know, the leaks down the side of the can. Now, you might remember in the previous uh, video at the end of the build, I used some green stuff for the tarpaulin i wasn't happy with that so i used um an actual uh, gla uh, glass uh, cleaning uh, cloth and uh, just soaked in a bit of pva glue and positioned it into place and as you see i painted it afterwards and quite literally to tie everything in i used some sewing string and um basically just run it all over just to make it look like the whole thing was uh, very well secured into place after it was all tied off I used a little dab of super glue over the last knot just to keep uh, the string in place and obviously cut off the excess and one of the final things to make this as American as possible I'd bought some of these cloth uh, cotton type uh, flags um, Quite simply, um, well, they're a bit fiddly to, uh, to be honest with you, but what I did was is I cut the uh, flags out kind of roughly, left a little bit for you know the the, the part that will go over the, the kind of like the flagpole if you like. Super glued them to what is going to be uh, one of the aerial antennas on the vehicle, and used uh, some bait. I mean, this stuff's basically. Um, really watered down PVA glue. I think it was something like ballast freeze I used for this. Squidged it all uh, together so it would uh, adhere. And then once that had dried off, I cut off the excess and sort of forced it into place uh, to give it a kind of semi kind of resting, semi kind of flying uh, sort of position. And with that in place, the vehicle is finished. So there we go, my friends. It's near time to reveal the finished model. I hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this video. I've really enjoyed uh, this build so far. We've got one more episode left, and that's going to be doing a nice little vignette uh, for the model. So keep an eye out for that video. Um, and if you have enjoyed uh, the video and you're enjoying what you're seeing so far, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel really does help and do appreciate it obviously if you put the bell notification on as well it will tell you when that next video is available also if you'd like to help support the channel further as well as just subscribing and liking the video there are links in the description down below to support further again thank you everyone so much uh, for watching uh, the video again i hope you enjoy it and i hope you finish hope you enjoy sorry these uh, finished photos of the model and I will catch you in the next one.